Welcome. Are you getting ready to load into your first server on the front? Is it PvP or is it PvE? Either way, this video is going to give you tips and tricks to help you maximize your potential, maximize your speed, and show you some of the shortfalls that can get new players killed in PvP and slow down new players in PvE. So, let's talk about it. Okay, you just loaded in. This is your first game. What is the first thing you're gonna do? So what I recommend, first things first, pick somewhere. What is your goal? Where are you going? You need a goal in mind. You do not wanna just aimlessly run around the map. If you're on PVP, that's how you get yourself killed. And if you're on PVE, that's how you slow yourself down and reduce your XP uh, gain rates. So we're gonna choose to start moving down towards this river. Now, the entire time that I'm running towards this river, I am gathering rocks, stone, and the second that I can, you're going to start to build tools with those. Grab a couple fibers from that. This is how you're going to not slow yourself down. The idea is to not waste time. So right now, I have to run. I'm going to waste time on that no matter what I do. However, I can gain a little bit back by grabbing this as I go. So right now, fiber, berries. While you're on your first time running... All these bushes are going to give you berries. That's going to give you food and water. Is it the best? Is it the best solution? No, but it's a good answer for the short game while you're trying to get to where you're going. All right, now you're at your base. The next step is going to be building the minimum amount of items just to have a base. So a couple things we're going to want to focus on is tools. Do, But if you go to tech and go to weapons, your first three items should be the axe, the spear, and the knife. And here's why. So the stone axe, the stone pickaxe, that's going to increase your gathering rates of trees and rocks. And then this right here, in here, the stone sickle is going to increase the percentage gathering for gathering stuff like bushes. So we're going to come in here right now and we're going to go ahead and build these. All right, now that we have these, we are able to increase our gathering rate. So if I come to um, anything, I'm gonna grab this bush, I'm gonna get three fiber. But if I switch to this, and then I hit it, I'm now getting seven fiber. That's gonna be more XP. Note that XP in this game is per item received, not per resource gathered. So you don't get XP for one bush, you get XP for all that on the right. So I got 2.48 XP on that one. So on this bush, you'll see if I come here, so now I'm getting 1.36, 2.26, a luckier one. Didn't drop on that one, 1.14. So I'm getting a lot more XP when I'm actually using the scythe, which is what the name of the game is. You need to get XP and you need to maximize that. The second that you're able to, as you start building your base and you start getting talents, you want to upgrade your, your weapons in, by getting the weapon bench and then getting the iron tools because these are gonna give you more resources per swing and it's going to get you XP faster so you can level up more and more and more. And the second you unlock the electric stuff, you do the electric. The item I'm going to be looking at building is a storage chest. This is so I can do something with all these resources. So I'm going to build a wood box. And now with the wood box, I'm just going to set it down. And now I can come in here and I can empty my inventory. Because whenever you start, you're going to have a bunch of nonsense in your inventory. That's just going to take up space. So now you can clear that out and you can focus on getting XP and leveling up. And now you have somewhere to base yourself out of. All right, the next one of the first items you're going to want to unlock whenever you get to your base is going to be the fish basket. So the simple fish bas basket is incredibly easy to put down and it's going to give you unlimited food. Unlimit and then later in the game when you need it, it's going to give you sand and clay. Super simple to put down. So there it is. I just put it down and then all you have to do is run up to it every now and again and take fish from it and put it on a campfire. And that's going to keep your XP gains at the quickest that you can get them at. For our next topic, we're going to progress a little bit more into the game into the time where you have guns, but this will also work with a bow and arrow. It'll just be a little bit slower. So how to kill people quickly and save your time. What we're going to prioritize here is not using ammo, using a spear to finish them off and keeping all of them dying near each other to where the loot will auto stack. So in this game, whenever you kill somebody, the loot, if it drops near another bag of loot, they will automatically combine into one loot. We're all about saving time. So 
We're gonna kill the gun guys. So this works for everyone that doesn't have a gun. The people with guns will not path towards you. So the gun guys are dead. Next. With this, there's certain people you don't really need to kill. For instance, this guy right here, he's very difficult and he doesn't give you any extra um, items. He doesn't drop anything. So we're just not gonna worry about him. And you're gonna see me attract the attention of a few different people that I, I wanna kill. So literally, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look around. I'm going to shoot this person or shoot an arrow at this person. I'm going to shoot them both once. And you can do this to as many people as you want. And then as they run up, I'll finish them off with a spear. Oh. And then we can see now that we have all the loot in one bag. Super quick, super easy. Which brings us into our next point. So clearing a mine. The big mistake people have whenever they clear a mine is they will run around and they'll kill everybody before they mine. That is not the, that's not what your goal should be. Your goal should be speed and efficiency. So I'm literally gonna sprint through this place, mining it. Now this can be with the pickaxe, stone pickaxe, iron pickaxe, whatever it'll be. But if I don't have to kill someone, I'm not going to. The XP that you're gonna get from killing someone is not worth the time that it's gonna slow you down, especially early game. You're gonna get so much XP from getting these rocks. That if I can dodge, I will just dodge. Especially when it comes to the big shield guys. So this person up there looks like he is pathing towards me. What are you what are you doing? Alright, let's speed this up. All right, guys, just remember, when clearing mines, your goal is speed and efficiency. Now, if you're early game and you need talent books and you need uh, ether shards, then yeah, sure, you can clear the mine. But if you're in the mid game at that point, if you need if you need talent books and ether shard, there's better ways to get it. The mine is for resources. Go to the res go to the mine, get your resources, and get out. Let that mine begin its respawn cycle. The respawn cycle of a mine is between one and a half to two hours with the people respawning about 15 minutes before the actual resources do. The next item of discussion on this foggy morning is going to be blueprints. Should you use them? In the early game, no. No, you should not. You should not be spending the extra resources because if you look at the crafting cost, you'll see that these blueprints get very expensive. So in the early game for iron components, not really, definitely not for stone components. But eventually, when you get up to the senior part of the game, you're going to want to look into doing this simply because the collection rate up at the top. So this purple item has 176. So you're gonna get an extra 76% of all wood you cut with this item. And then this chainsaw, 214, paired with the fact that its durability is much higher and it can actually do more damage to whatever you need to do damage to. So up at the higher levels, yes, you should be using blueprints because you're going to get more items per, you know, second of cutting wood. And for every extra item you get, you get extra XP. So yes, you should be using blueprints, but not in the early game. In the early game, you can throw them away. You can save them if you find a really good one and you're that lucky, then you can save them if you want. But you should not really be building blueprints. And these are going to be for everything from building structures, from tools to boots so whatever you can imagine, they're going to have blueprints for it. All right, on to the next part of the video. We're going to be going over hunting. So right here in front of me, in the center of the screen, you can see we have a fox. There is a boar, and there's a deer just over that hill. So if you're in the very beginning stage of the game, something you need to know is foxes and pigs are dangerous. Foxes will attack you on site, and I'll show you right now. There's this one. So this one has seen me. I got in his line of sight, so he's now attacking me. The deers are pretty chill. They're not going to do too much. Yeah, so foxes will attack whenever they see you, and they will do a lot of damage, and they can easily kill you. Pigs, on the other hand, 
can kill you faster than a fox, but a pig will only attack you if you attack it. All right, we're gonna attempt to show you how to bait the uh, bait the hog here whenever you attack it. So you'll see the hog will plan his feet and then he'll begin his little head sway. And if you can get good at sidestepping or stepping away from it, you can effectively dodge it. Huh. Yeah, so I'm a level 45 and that thing almost killed me. In the early game, you need to be very careful about these creatures. However, they do give you a pretty good amount of resources and XP. If you look on the bottom right, the amount of XP I'm getting off this guy. Now, mind you, this is a steel tool, and I do have some points into this in the talent book system. The last animal we'll talk about is going to be the deer. So the deer will run off. It's very skittish the second you open fire on it. However, if you have the hunting rifle, it is a one-shot kill. It's always a one-shot kill with the hunting rifle. So as far as your ability to get a bunch of them go, you can easily kill them. And then on the map, which you'll see in the map section of this video, we're gonna go over a couple things. Um, we like, you can just go up to one of the deer spawns and then kill all nine or 10 that are spawned at one time, get a bunch of XP, bunch of meat, bunch of hide, bunch of bones. All right, guys, part eight of this video is gonna be super simple. We're gonna go over squads. Squads in the front are six man teams that you can join and then you can all build together. So these are our six people right here. I am the squad leader. I can transfer leadership. So that way if I'm away and they need someone else to take over the squad for a little bit, they can do that. Everybody that builds is all gonna be built under my name. Everybody that builds inside of the space time beacon circle will build under my name and it'll all be under my repair, so long as we are all in the same squad, which is the important part. Should there be building done before you put down your beacon, and then you put down your beacon and somebody else who's not in the squad has built stuff, you can add them to the squad and anything they built that is inside the range will automatically transfer into your inventory and it'll all be, it'll put your name on it. And the last tip we have for you is a basic breakdown of the map so all your spawns the the ones that people normally go for are on the right side the eastern one two three and four is down here i believe so a couple things that you should know all these areas along the coast are generally considered to be easier the enemies are easier they take less bullet takes less arrows but they also drop less loot and that's going to be up and down the board coming up along the wall that runs around the j to k divide right here this is where you're going to get into higher tiered enemies. And then when you get into the snow, that's where you have your highest tiered enemies up here in the snow on the peaks. Quick breakdown. So looking at the left, you have the enemy gathering points, commonly referred to as POIs or points of interest. You have your animal dwellings. This is just going to be a rock where a bunch of animals spawn around. So you can take like the hunting rifle up here to the deer area like we talked about earlier in this. Uh, rebel camps. You can see that we haven't found any. We have been looking for them. They're a little bit harder to find apparently. So these are all the different mines. So I'm going to talk you through what all these symbols mean. So for the mines, you have your copper, you have salt right here, the two salt mines, they actually made a video about that. This is iron, so you see a lot of different iron. Your lead mines, imperial territory, basically anywhere where there's gonna be a major road intersection, you should expect an imperial base. And honestly, don't worry, not a big deal, just drive right through it and don't stop. Farms. Farms is just a POI that is full of enemies that are farming whatever it might be. So down here, some sugar cane, some hops. Uh, up here, they're farming dandelions, and you just run in there, kill everybody and then it's all yours all right guys that is the end of the video thank you for watching if you did enjoy what you saw please do consider subscribing liking following dropping a comment letting us know what you want to see how we can help you what are you looking for what makes you interested in this channel and what you would like to see in this channel moving forward